Hey, what we're gonna do is mount a six inch vise to the table. But I wanna explain to you guys the whole process on it. For you youngers that no one actually tells you how to do this stuff. So I got a six inch vise I stole from the shop. I took my four inch off because we actually needed a small vise. All right, first thing, we're gonna clean our table, right? Whatever was on it, whatever chips were in the grooves, we got them cleaned out. Um, you're gonna stone off the table just lightly. And that's just to get any little burrs or nicks that if you drop the tool or whatnot. And the same with the bottom of the vise. You're gonna wipe it down, clean it, and lightly with a stone. I always use my hands. You can feel a little nick in the bottom of a vise with your hands. Um, a rag you're not feeling that with, and then you leave residue. One little thing left over on your vise is gonna mess your setup up. We don't care, we're just working on the garage. I'm just making some stuff for myself, but. All right, we're gonna throw this baby up here, and I like to slide it a little bit. All right, now you got three grooves here you can pick for your slots for your vise. I'm gonna pick the middle one, uh, and really the difference is you can hang out more, you can be closer in, uh, depending on what you're needing. Another thing you might get yelled at, you try to uh, put your vise on different spots all the time uh, so you don't wear out one spot on your machine. But I'm putting my baby right there and we're gonna hold it down with some T-nuts and some bolts. Now, I wanna explain to you guys, these are usually kits you'll see laying around the shop and it's just a T-nut. That's what slides into your slot. And then the height, these are all half 13. Bridge ports are usually standard, you know. Um, you pick what you need to get your right height. All right. Let's get to it. So there's my basically nuts with a stud. And we're gonna slide them in here. And what I like to do is tighten one side up. So this vise, what we're trying to do is make it parallel with the table. Almost exactly, if you're machining, you want this thing to be exactly square. So some people push them all the way against your T-slots. I like to come back a little bit and just tighten, snug up one side. And you leave, you leave that one side as a pivot point. And you gotta indicate this back and forth. So how do we do that? All right, we're gonna need an indicator, right? We're gonna go into my cabinet here. And I gotta have an indicator sitting here on my gauge block set. So we're gonna come back, drop my table down. So I got more room up here. So as I'm doing this, guys, we're gonna be teaching you this, but I'm trying to teach you guys how to start your own business out of the garage, right? So how you do that is pick your machine you want. I like the mill. Like I said, these two, the, the grinder and the lathe are add-ons for me. Because in my area, we don't have a lot of shaft work. I mean, there's shaft work, but most of my, uh, the companies around here, we're doing bracketry. Um, there's a lot of milling work. Shaft work, you need a mill anyways, correct? So if you're gonna get a lathe, you're gonna be turning shafts, but most shafts has keys in there, right? So you're gonna have to have a mill to put a key in there. So I like the mill. So if you're gonna find a mill, start looking online, guys. I just wanna let you guys know, this is my hobby shop. This shop is what got me my bigger shop. I got a full CNC shop uh, somewhere else, but this is how I got started. And that was only three years ago. So, you know, and it only took three months working out of this shop to find that other shop and have all the balls rolling. So I can do it, you can do it, let's do this together. I'm gonna tell you how. So let's square up this vice, guys. All right. So again, pick out the machine you guys are looking for. You want a welder? How much is that welder? Start looking them online, everything's online, right? 
what I didn't show you guys is this collet's already, this chuck's already on a R8 collet or chuck. Basically this part, this is what fits into a Bridgeport style. And you see me reaching up here, this is what's up there. This is called a draw bar and it screws on here and I'm tightening it. And as it tightens, it draws this up on this taper into the spindle. So this is how that's locked in there. All right. Right now, I'm gonna put the spindle in neutral so I can rock it. And we're gonna come over here. And I like to come to the side I snugged up. And just have my indicator read. And you can switch it to zero, however you want. Now we're gonna go to the other side that's not snugged up. And man, look at that. It's off. And it's too much. You see how that wound the indicator up? So I need to either hit this side that way to adjust it. I don't have my hammer right now. All right, we're gonna smack this around. Now I'm not too bad. So I'm gonna back it off, go back up. And I like to spin it, that's the high spot. See that? All right, let's go back to my other side. And ah, uh, am I too much or not? Yes, I'm still too much. So, and now I'm gonna snug this up a little bit more so it doesn't move as much. And that didn't move. So let's reset that. And I'm gonna snug this side up. I just got in your way, didn't I? Too bad. Let's see where I'm at. All right. For my brackets, I think that's good enough. For who it's for. All right. That's the basics of a vice getting squared up. <laughs>